Alright guys, I'm here at the 2015 Kia K900. This one comes to me with the VIP package installed. This gives you all the goodies you can possibly get out of a Kia. It kind of rivals the Hyundai Equus. Uh, so Kia and Hyundai are kind of going back and forth as to who's going to be the supreme being in the luxury realm when it comes to lower priced luxury cars. Up front here, what you get are a set of LED headlights that are actually adaptive. So as you're cruising down the highway, you turn the wheel left and right. These headlights turn with you. Keep stuff nice and clear, let you see around corners very easily. Uh, something you sometimes run into, come around a corner too hot and the headlights catch something really quickly as you straighten out. These avoid that by turning with you. It's really cool. Up front here, you get a slightly modified Kia grille. Um, as you can see, it's one piece instead of being uh, molded in the shape of the typical Kia grille. And you also get a 3D grille here in the center that gives it a nice luxurious look. Something that I kind of took some issue with though is the front mounted camera because this does have the surround view, which I get to later on. There's a front camera mounted right here, right where the Jaguar emblem will be on most Jag cars. It's a little bit, it stands out a little bit too much, but it is a Kia, so you have to take a little bit of a trade off. You're getting $100,000 worth of features for $60,000. So there are little things like that. I wish they'd kind of do away with the massive Kia emblem up front, but I understand Kia and Hyundai are trying to, trying to get their brand out there a little bit more, so it's understandable. Here you get a little heat port, which is a little strange, a little bit too Buicky for me. I kind of wish they'd do away with that. It gives this side a nice, smoother, uh, smoother profile, but it's okay. Some people may like that. I personally don't care for it. You also get a nice set of 19 inch shiny chrome rims. And these are wrapped up in Y rated rubber. So this thing handles really, really well, but you are gonna run into an issue when it comes time to replace these pieces of rubber because they are going to be expensive. So keep that in mind if you're out shopping for this car. When it comes time for tires, be prepared to spend about 800 bucks. Up on the hood, you have some real nice sharp ridges. Gives the hood a nice, nice sporty appearance for a big luxury sedan. Coming down this massive side, you have a nice body line here. You have chrome door handles with the smart entry button right here. On the side view mirror, you have your U-shaped repeater. This is not your typical straight repeater, so it looks a little more luxurious with a nice little U-shape here. You have chrome around the windows, and up top you have a massive, massive panoramic sunroof that goes front to back, so everybody gets a nice view of the sunshine. Now, the only bad thing about that is the sunroof only goes back about halfway, so only the front seat really gets to enjoy it, but the back seat gets a nice view skyward. Uh, a good thing for the kiddies to enjoy you know, stargates and while they're cruising the highway or something like that. Out back here you get a shark fin antenna that does away with the basic antenna on the body. Nowhere on this body will you find an antenna, which gives it a nice sleek look. Um, even with the ones that have retractable antennas, there's still that big hunk of shiny metal sitting there. So it's really nice to get a shark fin antenna on top of this thing. They're becoming more common, but to see it on a Kia is, is really nice, especially one at this price range. But overall, as you can see on from the front end and down the side, you get a real sporty, sporty look uh, for a big sedan. This thing kind of rivals the E-Class and BMW 5 Series, maybe even the 6 Series. It kind of sits in between. Um, so you get a real sharp look, nice curvature up front, real nice big wide open grille, a nice uh, lip coiler down here with your fog lights and your LED running lights. So you get a real nice look for your $66,000. Let's go ahead and take a look what we have inside. Inside the Kia K900, you have all sorts of goodness. This thing really rivals uh, BMW, Mercedes, and even Audi. You have real wood grain on the steering wheel. Every wood grain in this thing that you touch is real. It's not that fake lacquered plastic that, that just looks and feels really fake. Kind of like the Kia Sorento I did. It had fake wood, and it was very obviously fake. This here is a real true wood grain. You have leather on everything you touch up on the dashboard, on the top of the doors, on your seats, on your center console, even on the side here is all leather. Only place that's not leather are where you're touching wood. So you get a really nice feel inside this car. Now there are a few bits that are not leather. They're hard, scratchy plastic. But those are the places you want to be, hard, scratchy plastic. Down here on the base of the doors, down here on the base of your center console, you want those to be scratchy plastic because your feet are constantly banging off of it. And last thing you want to do is bang your dirty foot off of very high-end leather. So it's really smart by Kia to say, okay, we're going to make everything up on top leather. But everything down the bottom where your feet go, you're going to have cloth or you're going to have um, plastic. Down here in the door, uh, door sills, you have a K900 emblem that lights up red in the nighttime. All these uh, buttons here, 
everything up on the dashboard all gets a really nice red glow at nighttime. It's a really good ambiance inside the car. You really feel like you're in a very high-end car, which you actually are. If it weren't for this Kia badge slapped right here on the steering wheel, I would swear I'm driving a Mercedes or even a BMW. Uh, you have a big 9.2 inch LCD screen right here. You have your tri-zone climate control, front, passenger, front driver, front passenger, and the rear seat. I'll show you the rear seat controls here shortly. You have a nice big center console here. You have the shift by wire shifter here, similar to like what BMW does. Um, it's a little quirky because if you're driving and you actually bump it, it kicks itself out of gear. It's not like a traditional shifter where it locks in the gear. If you bump this thing, it kicks it out, it kicks itself out of gear. And it's kind of annoying if you just accidentally bump it. Now this stereo system in this thing is flipping awesome. It's a Levinson 7, a Levinson Logic 7, I'm sorry, 17 speakers, 900 watts. This thing kicks ass. Um, it is by far the best stereo system I've ever experienced in a car. Bar none, nothing does it better. It has perfect lows, perfect mids, perfect highs. It's perfect all the way around. So there's really no complaints when it comes to the audio system. You crank this thing all the way up, there's not an ounce of distortion. The bass is perfect. It's not overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly bassy. It's not overwhelmingly high. It's just a perfect, nice balance. It sounds like you're at a concert almost. So up front here, you get all kinds of goodies. But don't think that the back seat passengers also uh, don't get things. They get plenty of stuff to touch and feel and play with. So let's go ahead and jump in the back seat and have a look what's back there. Okay, now we're in the back seat of the Kia K900. Back here, there is a lot more to do than you would really expect. Sure, there's no big screen to watch a, a DVD or anything on. I'm sure you can add that as an option at the dealership, but straight from the factory, Kia doesn't offer that. But there's still a whole lot of nice stuff going on back here. First of all, you get the same premium leather seats as you get up front. You get pockets up here that extend out very nicely. A lot of these pockets, you can't really stick anything in there. These come out pretty far. You get the wood trimming here to see you get your own AC vents. You have one AC vent here. You have two AC vents here and one all the way over here. Um, another big thing about this car that a lot of people don't realize is the back seats actually recline. So I can take this little button and in it goes. Now I'm sitting up straight. Now I can go like this, and out it goes. And much like the front, the door sill here has a K900 emblem that lights up red. You get all kind of red ambiance back here as well. And the rear AC controls are actually hidden. They're right here. You have all the controls you could possibly want here. You have rear locks so the kiddies can't sit there and play with it. You have the, uh, the rear shade. You also have heating and cooling for the rear seats. The AC controls are here with a little LCD display right here. And you also have a little center console here to stick your stick your stuff. And again, real wood trimming all the way around. Kia really went to the nines with loading this thing with all kind of real wood. It's very, very surprising to see this out of the Kia model. I um, really don't expect to see all of this real wood. Um, and back here you have the sunroof goes about halfway back to the back seat. And you have tons of legroom. I'm not a big guy. But still, I have so much leg room, and this seat is pushed back pretty far right now. I have all sorts of leg room, and that's even with the seat reclined. If you put the seat in its upright position, like that, you get even more leg room. So really, you're getting a whole lot of bang for your buck, especially in the back seat, which is something you don't expect from a Kia. You expect the front seat to be very luxurious, but you don't expect to have all these niceties in the back seat. You kind of expect Kia to say, okay, we made the front perfect. So we'll relax on the back seat a little bit. But they didn't do that. They really focused on both front and back uh, passenger comfort and features. Um, so overall, I have to say, I am very, very pleased with this model. Um, it rivals, like I said, your BMW 5 or 6 series and your Mercedes E-Class. And what you're getting here, you're getting about $100,000, $80,000 to $100,000 worth of car for the mid-60s. Even with the VIP package installed, this thing checks in at 66,000 bucks. So you're getting a whole lot of bang for your buck. So if you want to find out how this thing drives, check out my driven review later on down in the article. I really appreciate you guys watching my, uh, my walk around video and we'll catch you on the flip side of my drive. Thanks a lot.